Hello to my YouTube family and my Lupus uh, family and everybody who subscribes to my channel. I want to say uh, happy 2015. It's a little bit late. Well, it's more than a little bit late. It's like real, real, real late. But I wanted to put this grid information up before too much more time passed because this is um, so important for people, excuse me, um, currently <clears throat> trying to win a disability case. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to put the link below where you go to get to this specific page. But what you can do is it will tell you your chances of winning the case, excuse me, winning the case uh, under the um, disability grid rules, okay? So it has all this stuff that you need to read through, but I'm just going to scroll past it and come down here to this table. This table here that you see, um, it is the residual functional capacity, the maximum sustained work capa capability, limited to um, sedentary work as a result of um, severe medically determinable impairments. Wow, that was a load. <clears throat> I apologize, I have some drainage going on uh, with my nasal, so uh, pardon me ahead of time. But once you come down here to, the, to this table, it gives you the rule number here in this column. Here it tells you the age, it says advanced age. It'll tell, it'll explain what advanced age is. I think it's over. If it, it's like 55 and older, I believe, uh, is advanced age, and then it'll have you know, for the 40 year olds and 45, and kind of gives you your like likelihood of winning on the grid rules. So. It's important to see what range you fall in, in terms of age. Also, your education, your previous work experience, and then the likely decision that you'll get is in this column here. And this is actually what the disability judges use. They actually use this because I saw my judge um, refer to this when I was in court. So I know that they use it. Now here's the key. Your age, let's say your age is 52. So let me scroll down. Um, I don't know what all these do, do is. The first time I looked at this, it didn't say that. It had numbers there. Uh, let's see, younger individual, which is age 45 to 49. Um, younger individual age 18 to 44 so that's really getting into the the younger uh, categories there um, so this is 45 to 49 so I'm gonna go up here and assume this is closely approaching advanced age so this is probably like 50 to 54 because the other one went to 49 so I'm assuming that this one is like 50 to 54. So once you know that you fall within this range here, um, it is asking you in the center column what your education level is. So here they give an example of limited or less. Um, then it gives one high school graduate or more. Um, does not provide for direct entry into skill work. High school graduate or more provides for direct entry into skilled work. So these two is like, let's say you went to college and you um, majored in biology, okay? Um, but then you got out and you got a job as a hairdresser. So this is not 
a direct entry into the skill work area that you um, focused on at college. Then this one here says high school graduate or more, but provides for direct entry into skilled work. So then let's say that um, you graduated from high school, but then you got a job at a lab, um, you know, testing blood samples or something like that. So it was in your field of study. So then you would take it from this column and go over here. And I don't remember what the third column was. Uh, this is actually the fourth previous work experience. So um, if you have unskilled or none, let's say you were a housewife for 35 years and now you want to get disability based on the grid rules only, not a, not a physical disability, then if you have no skilled um, employment history, you just did, you know, the domestic technician your whole adult life then you would be unskilled. Then if you come over here, the likelihood of them giving you disability based on the grid rules, they say that they would have to rule that you are disabled. Okay, then when you come down here a little bit more and we're checking on your um, still within that same range, 50 to 54, and you have um, limited skills. Over here, your um, experience or background is skilled or semi-skilled, semi skills not transferable. Let's say you worked in an area that you can't just take to another com company, or, you know, it's like if I were a um, administrative assistant for uh, Boeing, I can take that and do the exact same thing with a few differences and go to um, Jack in the Box Corporation. So those are transferable. Or if you're a welder at one company, you can also get a welding job at another company. So your skills are transferable. So if they are, or excuse me, if they're not transferable, um, I don't know what this do is. So I guess it depends. It depends. Um, I'm not sure what this stands for, but I'm going to just take a leap and, and say I think it will depend. So you're still in the same age range here, 50 to 54. You come over here. Um, you have limited or less, I'm assuming, um, education. Then you come over here and your work history says skilled or semi-skilled, skills transferable. So now you have a skill set, skill set that you can transfer to a different company or a different department or um, it's just transferable overall then they would likely rule that you are not disabled because, as I was saying before, if you're a welder at company XYZ, well, that skill you can take along with you when you work for company ABC. Okay, so we go down here. You're still in the same age range. You have a high school diploma or higher, but... Um, does not provide for direct entry into skilled work. Your uh, work history is unskilled or none. It would um, they would rule you you disabled. And a lot of times I'm just telling you just an FYI, whether you use the grid rules to um, defend your case or not whether your attorney uses it or not, whether they know about it or not, they will still follow these 
grid rules, check the grid rules to see if you might apply under the grid rules. But you don't want to just trust that everybody, every judge will do it. So it's always good to establish, um, at least identify where you are as it relates to the grid rules. So if you need that, then you can fall back on it while you're in court. Uh, so this one here is like high school graduate or more, provides for direct entry into skill work. This one here is high school graduate or more, does not provide for direct entry into skill work. Down here is high school graduate or more, provides for direct entry into skill work. Uh, this one here, um, it falls under a different age category though. But it's like if you're a younger individual, age 45 to 49, and you are illiterate or unable to communicate in English, um, your work history is unskilled or none, you would be disabled. Same thing, 45 to 49, um, and you are limited or less at least literate and able to communicate in English. So let's say you um, you have no advanced um, education, no work history. I don't know what this do is. There again, if anybody knows what that is, put it down below because I would be interested to know what that stood for. Um, but then over here it says you would not be disabled because you may not have any skill set, but you're literate, you can read and write, you can comprehend, and you uh, can effectively communicate in English. And um, they feel like you could probably find a job, even if it's a low level job. Here again is 45 to 49. You have limited or less on your um, education and you're skilled or semi-skilled, uh, but it's not transferable. And there you say do, whatever that means. Uh, so this, I just wanted to give you an idea. You go over here and you read it. You make sure that you look at all of this. Um, this is table two. And these, of course, are different rule numbers. But it's also going to... You just find the column that says disabled if you want and then see what you need to have, where you need to be um, within this um, row here. And then it, it, it'll give you an idea, okay, of where you're at. And I took all this time just to say those few things and I, I apologize for making this a, a lengthy um, video. So I'm going to end this video and probably come out with another one in a few minutes. But here you have it. If you don't, uh, if you have an attorney representing you, make sure you sit down with your attorney and discuss the grid rules and if it might help your case. This would be good. Okay. So I'll talk to you a little bit later. I'm wish wishing you pools of spoons. I'm sending you loopy lovies and fluffy puppies to hug on. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.